Hello again and welcome to Ndudu by Fafa. So family, this is an incredible recipe that I'd say is over a hundred years old because mum told me this a few years ago and I haven't looked back. You know, being in the diaspora sometimes, you are limited with the kind of ingredients that you do have available. So as and when there's a process that makes things easier, I'm up for it. Especially when the flavor is still intact, the texture is there. Yes, I go for that. So on this particular day, if I remember, I had made ademe, which is the Molokai leaf soup with mum. And then I was like, oh, mom, I forgot. I've not, you know, I've not got any fermented corn dough. Mom was like, oh, don't worry. And she then told me this incredible secret. And I just looked at her and I was like, how long have you known this? She goes, since my childhood, like your grandma used to make that all the time. So, yes, let me pass this on to everyone. So now let's start. Here with some water, I'm mixing both the cornmeal and tapioca powder together until I have a beautiful thick consistency. Yes, there's a trick to this method and it has to be followed to the T. Now, do not worry about the measurements. I'll leave a link in the description box, which would have the detailed recipe, written recipe, of course, for you. And I'll also leave it a link at the top, so do check that out. So now that I'm mixing everything and I've now achieved that beautiful thick consistency and there are no lumps in sight, I'm now happy to now move to the next stage. Now, if this is your first time, you're welcome. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this recipe. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave a comment or two. And most importantly, also share with your family and friends. So now the pièce de résistance. Yes, apple cider vinegar. Yes, because it's fermented and it mimics the same flavor as one would ferment the corn. So here I've just added that to it and I'm just going to mix everything together. Now that we've achieved that consistency we're looking for, it's time for us to cook this beauty. Now, you will notice that I keep staring and you need to just move everything that's from the bottom that is sticking to the top. This would allow an even cook and also will help prevent any lumps from forming in your banku or amokla. Or in this case, it's my grandmama's akla. You know, when mom told me the story, I just like, you know, thought about it. And I was like, there's so many recipes that we have across the continent that, you know, we don't even know about. And also recipes created by, may I say, unnamed heroes. Um, because, yes, they have become a staple. And, you know, sometimes I actually think, like, how does one even understand to ferment the corn, to add the also fermented cassava dough and form the bangkun or the akla? And, you know, that fermentation that is always present in bangkun really helps when you're having it with your super stew because it just enhances the flavor of the dish. Now, you'll notice that with this, I haven't added salt. It's because, of course, the soup that I'll be serving this with has salt, but you can add your salt. So, yes, you will be alarmed and you might think that it's lumpy. No, all I just keep doing is moving the entire dough to the edge of the saucepan and using the flat part of the spatula to break any lumps. Yes. So if you follow this process through, you're good to go. Now, during Christmas, I received a DM from this beautiful lady and she's from Norway and she wanted to surprise her Ghanaian friend by preparing Bangkok. First thing that came to mind was that is a big challenge considering, you know, she's never cooked Bangkok before. But what I found so beautiful was how dedicated she was. She went to find the corn, she fermented it, she blended it, the, the cassava dough, she did everything from scratch. And I think the icing on the cake was when she presented her finished product. I was amazed. And I think it's one of the highlights of my cooking journey. 
you know, for someone who doesn't share the same heritage, but also goes out and makes one of the complex dishes, may I say, and does and executes it well, kudos. Yes. Now, if you've tried any of my recipes, yes, please do tag me in Dudu Bai Fafa and let me share. Absolutely. So now I've got that beautiful pliable texture, as you can tell. And yes, it did look lumpy before, but that was the dough forming. Yes. And now I've got it into the right texture. So I'm preparing the dough now to steam it. Yes. Because this is not cooked yet. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of water. Now, you do not want to add too much water, number one, no. Because, you know, the texture you're looking for, it will be to your own personal preference. Some might prefer a, a harder dough and others a soft and pliable one. So I prefer the softer version. So once I add the water, number one, you have to make sure that the water boils, yes, before you mix everything together yes because if the water doesn't boil it just goes right into the dough and then you end up with a wet dough but what you're looking for is a soft and pliable dough texture yes that's how we say it in the airway language so if you follow this process then you're good to go so each time you have to add a bit of water Allow the water to boil and then you mix it. Now, the banku was steamed for about six minutes when I did cover it. And you could just tell that it's even looking darker. It's got a darker beige color. Is it beige or butter? I think this is more of a butter color, isn't it? Yeah. Let me get my colors right. Yeah, so you got the battery color coming through beige where did i get that one from anyway so yeah so we've got that battery color coming through and here i'm mixing it and just checking that every part of this banku has that same color so once this is done i will add again bijou water yes because as i said i just like my thing soft and then this will be the final part. So those will be the last five minutes that I'll be cooking this. But look at the texture. Can you see exactly what I wanted to show you? Absolutely. This is it. I'm done. So if you are in the diaspora and, you know, there's one day you're craving for your bangkung, provided you've got your cornmeal, your tapioca flour, yes, you know, which should be like staples you should have in your cupboard anyway. And you've got a little bit of that apple cider vinegar, you're good to go. You know, back from work, bish, bash, bosh, instant fermented bangkung. All you have to do is make your okra soup or whatever you want to have with it and eat but you see thing is when i finish making my banku this is how i just portion it but you saw me eat that huge size before yeah i was hungry so i had to but now for the rest of the week i'll just be having a portion or maybe two but it makes it look like you know you're eating too much so you kind of stop yeah Exactly. I don't know who I'm kidding, but anyway, here is our instant fermented banku. Oh, if you'd like me to share my amazing okra soup recipe, that was like a bish bash bosh one as well. Yes, do leave your comments below. And also, do visit my online grocery shop, buyindudu.com, where you find spices, spice blends, seasonings, and more. You'd also find traditional African recipes on my blog, indudubaifafa.blogspot.com. So do check it out. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat as Indudu 
by Fafa. So pass by and say hi. Noral, thank you very much for my theme song. And until my next recipe with you kings and queens and beautiful people, take care of yourself, be nice, be beautiful, be gorgeous. And guess what? I love you for you always. You're the best. Mm-hmm.